Hey everybody, this is Brant from Wolf on Wall Street Trade with a market update for the week ending August 16th, 2019. Here's a daily chart of the S&P 500. What probably stands out off the bat right away is a lot of volatility here the last two weeks, up and down, big sharp moves. This is what I've been warning my uh, members and subscribers, my clients, to be aware of, you know, that uh, if you get a big day that is down 3%, you're probably going to get a big day that's up one and a half, maybe 2%. And uh, some people see those big days and they get drawn into the market. Uh, you know, CNBC quotes the Dow in points. Dow was up this many hundreds of points. But the fact is that this is just normal. So we're pretty much uh, still in this consolidation range. And we'll go into this a little bit more. One thing I love about uh, when volatility rises and you kind of break free of this uh, central bank dull suppressed trade is that price really starts talking to you like uh, like it's really meant to do on price charts. I'll give you an example. We left off last week uh, at the end of the video or somewhere on there with IWM putting in this little flag last Friday suggesting a downside to go. When we came into this week on Monday and the measured move, it hit it right here on Monday, right down to 148.40. And uh, we got a big rally on Tuesday, and you can see how the rest of the week worked out. But the point is that, you know, we get these really strong price patterns that give you a strong edge. This is what a weekly chart looks like. So you can see, once again, a really big price range, interweek price range of about 4%, pretty much identical to last week. This week, the S&P was down 1%, Dow down 1.5%, NASDAQ only down a half a percent, and small caps, IWM, down 1.3%, showing relative weakness. And if you uh, look at QQQ or even SPY, you can see it. You can kind of get an idea of what is going on here these last two weeks. This is a weekly chart, so weekly candles. It looks like a parallelogram like a bear flag. Here's the 60-minute chart to give you a little more clarity. And uh, one thing I got out of this week was this rally, okay, on the day that we got this strong rally, it made it clear that this was a bear flag. We had that second uh, pivot over here. And you saw the market break down over here around Wednesday. Uh, what's interesting is the SP 500, it did not break the low from back here at the fifth. So you can see you have almost like an equal low, almost like a double bottom. Uh, but if you do look at places like small caps, which tend to lead the market, what happened here was it made a lower low, lower than this August 5th low. I pulled up the energy sector here at XLE on a 60-minute chart while I talk about the sectors. So of the 11 S&P sectors, eight were down this week. Only three were up. Guess which three? Defensive sectors or the bond proxies, utilities, consumer staples, and real estate. Uh, energy was the worst performing. So here is this uh, downtrend, a break below the downtrend, a consolidation, another break lower. So the S&P held this level. Uh, a lot of sectors like energy, uh, broke down, and I want to show you something else on the year. This was a 20% gain about uh, April, the end of April. Now it has wiped out that entire gain and is trading red on the year. So it is below uh, where it started the year over here. It's the first major S&P sector to do that. Uh, another one that's done that, but it's not a major S&P sector, is the retail sector. Here's that uh, 2018 low. Here is uh, the start of the year, and it is red for the year. So you still have the S&P up quite a bit, uh, but some sectors here are really leading the way lower. To flip to the other side real quick, like I said, those defensive sectors are rocking. So XLU, that's a all-time record new high right there. And then the other one is XLRE, the real estate sector. That is an all-time new record high on Friday. So while the broader market is getting thrashed, uh, these sectors have been doing fantastic. Look, trending up. Uh, a little bit of volatility, but trending up. And uh, here's that channel that I've been watching for XLRE up to uh, about 39.50 up here at the top. So not everything is doing horribly. It's just you have to be in the right places. This is a late cycle market. Uh, some of the other right places are treasuries. TLT up about four, almost four and a half percent on the week. Look at the last two weeks here. This didn't just come out of nowhere. This is late cycle stuff. What happened in yields is what we really need to talk about. Uh, but while we're looking at TLT, this came out of very, very constructive price action many, many months ago. So if we walk this chart back, remember this big three-month bull flag that was just fantastic. Caught this long here, caught this long here. I did not catch this long, but I have a lot of members that did. I have uh, a couple of members that are long bonds, and they are also long euro dollar futures. That's called 
trading like a boss. We will get to treasuries in a second. By the way, that's an all-time record high for TLT. Or we'll get to yields in a second. Let's look at gold. There it is. Gold up about 1% on the week. Again, this did not come out of just nowhere. This was very, very constructive price action. Every time it went up, it consolidated. Big consolidations. You had to be patient with them. But they were bullish consolidations. Uh, here you have one. Here you have another. So some really good trading in here. We got in here. We got in here. Uh, I did not catch this. But I have quite a few uh, clients that did. So interesting little factoid. Gold is up almost 18% on the year. The S&P is up 15.2%. So gold is outperforming stocks on the year. Late cycle dynamics. So let's take a look at the 10-year yield because this is what really stood out this week. So this is a daily chart of the 10-year yield. Let me zoom this out a little bit just so you see how much it has just collapsed uh, in the last year. So this is the last two weeks. I'll zoom in a little bit closer from the FOMC over here. I believe it was right there. Yeah, 31st. The 10-year uh, yield is down 50 basis points. 20 basis points just last week alone. Now, I know that probably doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people. You know, 20 basis points uh, is supposed to be a big number. Let me put it this way. When the market is acting kind of normally, I usually expect the S&P and the 10-year yield to move in the same direction. The 10-year yield, about one basis point for every half percent move in the S&P. So that gives you some context when it's down 50 basis points in two weeks, 20 basis points this week. That would, you know, in normal times, I would be like a 10% decline in the S&P. That's how big this move in yields was. The 30-year yield, oh my Lord. This thing is under the Fed funds rate, okay? So if we kind of zoom back here, it has just collapsed. All-time record low for the 30-year yield. Bond investors have absolutely no fear that the economy is going to re-accelerate and growth and inflation are going to pick up. Otherwise, you wouldn't have a 2% yield on the 30-year. It is below the Fed funds rate. If you were listening to CNBC this week, I'm sure you heard a lot about the bond market is sending recessionary signals because the 10-year minus the 2-year yield inverted for the first time uh, since the financial crisis back here. This week, it closed out of inversion, but it technically inverted. And what tends to happen is the yield curve inverts, then it sharpens steeply, and we are in recession, these gray areas here. So you've probably heard a lot about that, like it was the first time it ever happened, but 60% of the yield curve, the 10-year curve, was already inverted. Once it gets over 50%, you have a recession. This is the one that the Federal Reserve themselves, in a research paper, said is the most accurate predictor of a recession. That is the 10-year minus the three-month treasury, and that inverted quite a while ago, first inverted in March. So CNBC is making this out to be big news. It's not big news. These curves have been inverted for a while. It's just most traders and investors are familiar with the twos and tens, and uh, so it got a lot of attention this week. But uh, the move in yields, the move in the yield curve was dramatic. Here's a chart of the S&P 500. Uh, in red and green candlesticks and the 10-year yield. This is a daily chart, so it's going back a while. This is growth and inflation. This is growth and inflation. This is deflation, growth slowing, markets freaking out. I mean, look at the drop in the 10-year yield relative to the S&P. One is very, very mispriced. When the bond market and the stock market disagree, it's usually the bond market that is correct. If you didn't know, you need to know this, that the stock market is being dragged around by the nose by treasury yields. So when treasury yields and stock prices diverge over the last two weeks, it always ends up being stocks that are wrong and stocks catching down to yields. So that started over here in late July. And uh, here's the FOMC. You can see yields were already leading lower before prices collapsed here. Yields again leading lower on this bounce. Price came down over here, this little flag leading lower price comes down over here not a higher high over here price comes down look at these this is an equal high in the s p lower high lower high price comes down and we're pretty much you know in a situation where yields are leading the broader market lower we could take a real close look at friday here's thursday afternoon after a really bad plunge and here's Friday. So you can see the 10-year uh, yield is starting to peel away from the S&P's prices. This is not 
as bad as some of the other ones we've seen. I went home a little bit short in uh, QQQ on Friday. Now one other thing you can do is look at sectors. So this is the SP500 on a 10 minute chart. And uh, that's the June low right over here. And this blue this blue line is the technology sector. Okay, so you can look at the market a couple ways, right? All these 11 sectors make up the S&P. So you can look at the S&P as kind of a summary of those 11 sectors, or you can break those 11 sectors down to get more detail on the S&P. So the technology sector did not make a lower low here, but here's the energy sector, blasted lower. Here's the financial sector, lower low. Okay, S&P did not make that yet. Here's the industrials, lower low. Here's the Dow transports in blue, down 2.3% this week, one of the worst performing areas. So much like small caps, already all the way down beyond this June low. Now it's not all gloom and doom. There are a couple sectors that are doing very well, like I mentioned before. Here's utilities in blue. So while the S&P has been selling off and has been a nightmare the last few weeks for anybody who owns it or is trying to buy it, you have utilities making an all-time new high and moving up here and you have real estate doing the same so what this tells us is it is providing some support because these are S&P sectors for the broader market but these are the most defensive areas that's where people are going very defensive stuff not going into you know the fangs and technology and all that other stuff now one thing I want to mention real quick for uh, my members because I did go home short some QQQ and I'm going to use a uh, daily chart of the S&P to illustrate so I was short both of these legs down the first leg down I was exclusively short small caps okay and the second leg down I laid into uh, Nasdaq more the tech stocks so this is the way I see it and this is the way it's pretty much been playing out small caps tend to lead so on these first declines they tend to act the worst so that's why I like to be short small caps first uh, because the tech sector has been a leader People don't want to give up on those stocks unless they get really scared. You know, the fangs and all those other things. That's what we saw in this sell-off. Apple was one of the last stocks to go down, but it did go down. So what I tend to do is when I'm anticipating a second leg down, I tend to switch to a uh, technology that usually has held up a little bit better, and then it breaks down. So that's kind of what I did here. I was short small caps here, and now I've started a uh, position in QQQ and technology. Let's take a look at some 3C charts real quick. Okay, so this is the best looking one this week in my opinion. So this is IWM, negative divergence here. This uh, negative divergence there, it's leading negative over here. Uh, that was actually last Friday, so that was the little flag we were talking about and price came down. Uh, really not a big divergence here, but started leading negative on Tuesday afternoon, price has come down. IWM looked the best down here Thursday and looked darn good on Friday. So IWM was the best performer on Friday. Small caps outperformed. So maybe they run into next week with a little bit more of that relative performance. On the five minute chart or the trend chart, it gets a little bit more interesting. So this was the negative divergence or uh, lack of confirmation negatively diverging into July before this leg down. And uh, it was pretty ugly over here. This is where we got that long bounce on this big buy signal over here. Went with that and you can see it got pretty ugly here. Prices came down and really as of like Wednesday, S&P was leading lower. So on Thursday, we saw some improvement and Friday, we saw a lot of improvement uh, around 1030 or so. This really spiked up. So SPY looks the best on these five minute charts right here going into next week. Let me show you a few of the other averages like QQQ, not so good. So here's QQQ negatively diverging into that July area before this leg down. And here you can see some sharp divergences here, uh, up in here, really bad. Really, it hasn't done very much. It was at a ugly, ugly leading negative low over here Wednesday and into Thursday. Hasn't done very much. That's one of the reasons I leaned toward QQQ. And here's small caps. Despite looking the best on Friday on those short-term charts, remember uh, going sideways mostly through July over here, but when it came to this breakout, not confirming and moving lower, kind of just rolling over here. So this does not look good to me. 3C is basically leading lower here in uh, IWM on this five minute chart. Something of interest too, I wanna to point out real quick. This is VVIX, the volatility of VIX. It's in this 110 to 115 range. This is like get under the desk with your crash helmet, rock back and forth, 
things are real when this is up here in this range. So this is Friday over here, came down in the morning, retraced all the losses. So even though the averages ended up near the highs of the day, this was moving higher all day back into this 110 to 115 zone where it is really, really high risk. This was surprising to see, especially in this zone of real high risk uh, when the S&P and all the other averages were up on Friday. By the way, for members, we did have a dominant price volume coming in at close up, volume down. So we do have the conditions for one day overbought uh, signal on Friday. So for now, the takeaway is, you know, watch this area of support for the S&P 500. The one interesting thing that is coming up next week that is uh, something you really need to pay attention to is the Jackson Hole Symposium in Wyoming Thursday, Friday. So that is going to be full of central bankers, including one Jay Powell. And from what I've read, Jay Powell just told the rest of the Fed uh, presidents, shut up, don't speak, cancel all of your speaking engagements. He doesn't want anybody saying anything. Uh, I don't know why, but maybe it's because they don't have very much to work with in terms of rates. The um, Fed funds rate only has 200 basis points. That's eight quarter point cuts. For some perspective, in the last couple recessions, the Fed has needed 550 basis points. They don't even have half of that. So he may be trying to work forward guidance. That's their, that's their other tool, basically talking. And what I am suspecting or thinking about is maybe he's going to hit the market over the head next uh, week, towards the end of the next week, and announce that the Fed is going to cut more than 25 basis points because right now the market expects that already. The market doesn't care about that. The reason yields and yield curves are collapsing is the market is saying that since this FOMC, things have gotten much worse and the Fed needs to do a lot more than 25 basis points. But if they cut, I think he probably needs to do 75, maybe even 100 to get the market to really be enthusiastic, but that leaves them almost nothing left, 100 basis points left when we do get into an actual recession. And I say when we do, because yes, I, I think we're going there. I am uh, not trying to be opinionated about this. I'm not trying to be ultra bearish. Look, the bond market has an incredibly uncanny track record with predicting recessions with yield curves. It's been predicting that since March. We just saw more evidence and look at this in the S&P 500. You know, this is a broadening formation. This is incredibly volatile. This is a bull market. This is not a bull market. So almost 19 months of trade back here at the January uh, 2018 high, the S&P is a half a percent higher. So other than dividends, that's what you got for holding this market for almost the last two years, a half a percent. That is a black hole of risk. So I'm not saying, you know, in my opinion, recession's coming. I'm saying in the bond market's opinion, and the bond market has been right about this for decades. If people don't want to believe it and they want to believe the cheerleaders on CNBC, well, what else can you say? I wish them the best. I really do. So next week, uh, maybe we get up into this gap, but I do think this is a, a bear flag. And otherwise, it's just a very, very volatile consolidation. And this is what you see between a first leg down and a second leg down. Matter of fact, here it is. First leg, consolidation, second leg. So we're looking at this as one big leg, consolidation, and another big leg. And uh, I've heard people get some pretty wacky targets, like the bottom is going to fall out of the market. You know, I don't know about that. I think uh, that this January low gets tested over here. And when we get closer to that, I will show you why I think that is eventually going to break. So we're going to leave it off there. And uh, I hope everybody has a fantastic weekend, a safe weekend. And I will see everybody on Monday.